Over the past year, the institutions have been bedded down under the leadership of Ian Paisley and myself, and it has indeed been a remarkably historic year. From the beginning, both of us treated each other with respect, and I wish to pay tribute to Ian Paisley for his role in this, and I wish him and his wife Eileen well in the future. Throughout the past year, we have enjoyed much support and goodwill from all of the people of Ireland. But we are now entering a new phase. As far as I am concerned, the honeymoon period is over. This is now about hard work. People out there are expecting results, and we have come here to deliver for the people. Our people want a future. They want a future for their children and prosperity at a time when the cost of living is spiralling. We must continue to grow our economy in order to generate wealth, to deliver effective public services and protect the most vulnerable in our society. The recent investment conference was a success and I am confident that it will lead to tangible results. And I would like to uh, echo what Peter Robinson said in thanking the US administration and those people who came here to uh, support what was, I believe, a very successful economic investment conference. Our people want an end to division, and our people want to be valued equally. As an Irish Republican, I want equality for everyone, not just for nationalists and for Republicans. We have a responsibility to promote tolerance and to celebrate our cultural and linguistic diversity. We must be open to the new communities who have enriched our society in recent years, and we must stand with them in the battle against racism. The war is over. Ian Paisley, in what, in my opinion, were very generous remarks after the first meeting of the North-South Ministerial Council in Armagh, said that we had to end the divisions and the old hatreds of the past on our island. That means proactively tackling the scourge of sectarianism. Difference in our past meant division. In the future, we need to ensure that difference isn't seen as a threat, but instead as something to cherish and indeed to celebrate. We need to start talking to each other and not at each other. And we as political leaders must take the lead, particularly here in this chamber. Our people also want to feel safe in their homes and on the streets. And I want to see this Assembly having the powers on policing and justice to ensure that this happens. We must continue to invest in health, education and the elderly. We face significant challenges in the global economy with rising prices and a downturn in the housing market. We also face challenges as we journey out of conflict and attempt to reconcile our past with a new and better future. I believe that despite all of the challenges which lie ahead, we will continue to make progress across this island. We are determined to bring an early conclusion to the talks which will begin tomorrow to resolve all of the outstanding issues from the St Andrews Agreement. I believe that our public wants stability and progress and acting together with the new First Minister, we intend to deliver both. In a speech in the United States in 2006, uh, the new First Minister made the following remarks. I hope that the sons and daughters of the planter and Gale have found a way to share the land of their birth and live together in peace. I very much share that hope. And as joint First Minister, the new First Minister and I, as leaders of the planter and the Gale, are charged with the responsibility to lead on the, on the way on behalf of this executive. Good morning, Margaret.